Show off your robot to thousands on the front page of Twitch. Submit your robot reveal video to Fun Premiere Night by going to tinyurl.com forward slash fun2019 info to learn more. Well, our next topic um, is one that we can both make you laugh, shake your head, and everything in between. We're going to dive right into the official FRC Q&A forums to find some of the funniest, questionable, or most intriguing posts of the season. So if you've had any that you find really intriguing, tag at First Date Updates now in chat, and we'll talk about it later on. So Libby, why don't you talk about what you've had in mind? I have a, I have more than one that I have in mind. I actually have sort of like a, a mini rant that tells a story through many Q and A's. So join me for this parable. Um, <laughs> there's my thing about the Q and A, is that there are some things, whether it's how the manual is written or how teams have come to understand things over time, that are so ambiguous that if they don't read the manual really, really carefully, which is a, a, a practice that teams have to get into um every year there are teams who just ask you know very kind of silly questions and it's because they haven't yet learned how to break the manual down and what rules are important um so let this be a tiny tiny psa uh for please 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 read the manual before you write a q a question because it wastes everyone's time both reading and answering i'm sure for first staff uh to have to answer silly questions for example and i mean zero shade to the teams that ask these questions except maybe marshall sometimes um but <laughs> like for example there are really really simple questions and until you don't have to show this one necessarily but it's like can we separate a part of our robot and leave it on the field and that's a sign that there is a manual that is written that is not clear enough to the average team right if you didn't get in sort of what is a robot? How can you interact with the field? That you can't leave something on the field. In my head, that means something needs to change about how the manual fundamentally works. But I mean, that question, that there's a specific rule, G21, that tells you that you can't detach. So like, Right. So a question called, can we separate from the robot body, is maybe not a great question to put in the q and I, I think, I, I'm picking an extreme example. But right, I but I thought, I thought you were saying that that question's indicative of that the manual needs to change. I think I may have said that because my brain's a little fuzzy today, but um, I did not intend that. I, I think there's there's two types of questions. There is the, I didn't understand, and so I'm asking a clarifying question. And then there's like, the I didn't read the damn manual, and I asked a stupid question. Detaching is something that's like, okay, it's right in the rules. Um, there are certain things, and I think first is probably uh, doesn't take community volunteers for the Q&A because people like me would just write things like, uh, no, as an answer, which is obviously not an answer. Well, I mean, first does that too. So basically, we're going to go through some sort of ridiculous, silly stuff in the uh, Q&A. And I think there's my, the, what I started with was sort of a rant and a ramble that the Q&A is not a replacement for the manual. It is not a place for you to ask questions because you couldn't find them in the manual. But teams need to get in the practice of reading. Um, the reason that that rant started is because I was starting to pull my silly question, which some of you have actually already predicted in chat, is uh, the Q&A 178, which is bill of materials cost for grown parts. Uh, per I1, the robot includes the bumpers, and per R12, the bill of materials consists of all right items on the robot. As a service product, one of our members planted seeds that have now become trees. If we used to wish to use the wood from the trees after cutting and planing to create our bumpers, is it acceptable to account for the cost of the seed as the fair market value of the wood? R15 allows bumpers to be created prior to kickoff. Hoping that first staff smiled when they read this, um, but also I kind of personally wish they hadn't, like I know that they, they need to answer it, but I wish that they hadn't answered it the way that they did because they answered with a, um, like, you'll need to consider raw material and labor, blah, blah, blah. In this specific instance, labor was done by team members and Mother Nature. A clever team will consider to her to be a team member, sidestepping the issue of valuing her work, which a reasonably astute observer, props to whoever wrote this question for putting that in specifically for 900, would correctly identify as priceless, making your robot worthy of adoration but unworthy of passing inspection, blah, 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 blah. Um, I, I think... What is frustrating about that is that it incentivized this idea that you can meme the Q&A. Um, it seems like exactly like Tronica first messed up by feeding the troll. Because the one I wanted to bring up, because I 
knew about 178. I'd seen it. I'd rolled my eyes. I'd laughed and I'd moved on because it was cute and it was funny and whatever. However, this week, there is a follow-up question. Q&A 227. By a diff- oh no, same team. I was going to say by a different team, but it's the same team. As a follow-up to 178, where we were instructed to possibly include Mother Nature as a source of materials, could you please provide additional guidance on how to correctly attribute materials conjured by wizards, such as Gandalf the Grey, as he seems to be present in the Bill of Materials template link per the blue box? Additionally, how do we correctly account for the labor cost of low-effort memes? Um, This is a high effort meme. And I, on the one hand, as someone who appreciates memes very thoroughly, um, love it. And then at the same time, like I see, I think first like opened a door to memeing on questions that now they're only going to get memes as questions or they're going to get a lot of memes as questions. Um, It made me laugh though. It made me shake my head, but at GDC, maybe stop because then people are just going to ask silly questions. And as a team that like religiously looks at the Q and a to make sure that we know all of the changes and nuances. Also, we asked a pretty meme question, but that's fine. Uh, if you can find it, I'll give you a cookie. Um, the, <laughs> I, I don't like that. It's sort of like filling the Q and a with random garbage and we should probably be focusing on actual questions that need answering. Karthik, your thoughts. I mean, I don't really know what to say about Gandalf the Grey or Mother Nature or people planting seeds, but, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> it's... What What yeah, can I, any of us say? I mean, I, I used to run the Q&A for uh, Vex Robotics competition for, like, eight years, and it was kind of like a miserable experience answering all those questions. So sometimes it was nice when you got a fun question. It kind of made you smile, kind of made you laugh. But there are other questions that were just, like, mean and stupid. So it, it would get tiresome. But at the same time, I always thought, like, hey, at the end of the day, these are paying customers. So you got to try and answer their questions. Like, I, we got a question once, because in Vex, you're not allowed to stand on step stools during a match. So someone asked if they could tape box, boxes to their shoes. And I was like, yeah, it made me laugh. So I may yeah, or may not be whatever. considering the um, the height of heel that would be legal as a shoe, as a drive I, I don't think there's a limit, you know, but maybe you should ask on the Q&A. Hey. Perfect. But, um, I will. So I, I have a favorite Q&A question, and it's like one where I don't know if this was the intent of the question, but it's Q&A 165, and uh, Tyler's putting it up on screen right now. And so it's a very simple question. If a robot outside either the HAB zone tips over unintentional or intentionally, does this violate G23? Example one from R25 makes me believe this would not be a violation of G23. At first, this seems like a simple question, an innocent question, because, like, you don't want a robot that tips over to get a penalty for being tipped over and then being outside the uh, 30-inch extension. That doesn't seem fair. So the answer, no, a simple change in orientation of robot does not violate G23, as the first example of blue box demonstrates. So they're basically saying your extension limit is always based on the orientation of your bumpers as they're normally configured at the start of the match. But, like, that opens up this huge door for the most ridiculous strategy where you could build a robot with a 27 foot tall elevator and have your robot tip over intentionally. And then you have a wall bot. And like a lot of you are like, yo, what's a wall bot? But let me tell you, wall bots used to be the game breaker in the Vex robotics competition until they were unfortunately made illegal and restricted. And like, I was on the game design committee for that. And I did not want wall bots to become illegal. Like, look at this stuff, these massive exploding robots that would try and shut down the game. And it was so cool. But if you look at this year's game, if you can make this massive 27 foot wide robot, you can block off access to the entire hab zone and all the loaders and almost all the game pieces. And it's been so wild since we've had a good chokehold. And I know right now you're saying, yeah, okay, well that's impossible, but that's what everyone said about 469 and 2010 with the infinite cycles. And so could someone do this? Probably not, but I would love to see someone build this. Cause it would just be like, I'm, you know, I, I love yeah, I, I love going to events. I love watching robots, and it's fun. But, like, you do kind of get tired of seeing the same cookie-cutter types of robots that you've already seen because you've watched an RI3D or whatever. Like, I, I love seeing different and super creative robots. That's why 469 in 2010 is one of my favorite of all time. That's why Beatty in 2002, when they grabbed the three goals, is one of my favorites. So I would love to see someone build something like this. And then you're probably going to be like, well, penalties would be an issue because you can't contact a robot that bumpers are fully within the hab zone. But, like... 
yeah, I know it's not realistic, but it's just like, it's fun to think about. And maybe someone out there can pull this off and find a way to anchor to the field without actually anchoring to the field and cut off the field with this 27 foot robot. And, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, it's against the spirit of the rules. I'm like, yeah, probably. But like, if I really wanted to do this, I would just ask and be like, hey, is this legal? And if they said no, then move on. But otherwise, like, this would be something to go for. I don't know. I just, like, this looking at these wall bots and, like, again, seeing these various ones at Vex Worlds. And, like, there was one wall bot that year that, like, set off two walls. And then it had, like, a mini robot that drove from, out from under it that was tethered. And I just like seeing cool robots. And this question really excited me because it opened the door for something cool that I know is probably not going to happen. But I just wanted to talk about it. It is really cool. Every time I, I like hear about Wallbots and like watching those videos is, is so neat. I think that I I too wish that chokeholdy stuff like that still exists because uh, we I, like I mean I steal ninety percent of your content, Karthik, but uh, we we go through a strategic design process that involves talking about chokeholds and you know now it's like well where is that in this year's manual? I'm like it doesn't exist anymore, kids. Fun is ruined. Um, but. <laughs> We have a couple of um, quick questions slash favorite Q and A's from chat. Uh, Electronica asking, "Can a team get banned from the Q and A for spam?" Dear Lord, I'd like them to keep trying because it's so funny to me. Um, <laughs> but well, we... I, I'll say this: that when there was um, Ask Frank Fridays on the blog, there was one person who had su submitted too many questions and first told them to stop submitting questions. <laughs> So. Uh, I mean, it happens. Um, I, I can understand where they might not want to see a particular form of media like dominated by one team or one, you know, responder. Um, so that makes sense to me, at least at a base level. Um, some of our other favorites from chat. Mick last posted 221, which is, I don't understand. If, if we were to, we were to our remove our own null hatch panel from the cargo ship, which you cannot do because they're bolted, uh, then place it on the rocket ship. Would the hatch be considered squared? Okay. That, that's just like a mistake in reading. That's not, I don't think that's that funny. I can't read sometimes. It's fine. Yeah. Reading Let's do hard. better. Let's do better chat. What other funny ones do they have? For uh, us? 238. Uh, hatch panel loading station. Um, well, this isn't funny. This is. Yeah, this is the, the about the the motion perpendicular to the alliance wall. So, uh, two three eight section four eight one two details the hatch panel portion of the loading station. We have built a model to the specifications, and the rubber fork of the Frost King brushes forms a quarter inch rubber lip, requiring a vertical lift of the panels before they can be removed for the brush portion. We have examined the CAD models of the competition field and don't see a corresponding lip. Is it expected to be able to remove a panel with only a motion perpendicular to the alliance wall? Thank you for pointing out there's a difference between the field version and the team version. There always is. Um, that's not the answer. That's just me. It is possible to remove a hatch panel without lifting it. And I'm trying to cut out some of the. Yeah, we don't need to. We don't. Need, we don't need to read the whole thing. Perform similar to the field loading station, but there are differences. They have different profiles, which results in the hatch panel sitting slightly lower relative to the assembly. Uh, the hatch panel is more likely to be caught by the lip of the brush on the team version than the official field version. Uh, look for updated team drawings and more information in team update eight. So make sure you guys pay attention to the team updates there, so I guess. The, 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 it's, it's never good whether there's like an inaccuracy or inconsistency like that, but the good thing is the real field is more forgiving than the team version. If it's the other way around, that's when things suck, when you show up at the real field and you can't do something, so. Like the like teams building wooden bridges at home in 2012? Uh, was there an issue with wooden bridges? We, we didn't have wooden ones. So Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Why would we build wooden versions of something you have to directly interact with? Because your team might have no money, okay? Hey, I saw that your team posted on Chief Delphi saying Don't. that money is the easiest resource to acquire, okay? <laughs> oh, I just got the deck. I'm oh, done. <laughs> um, I... I will actually, we'll touch on that in the next topic, won't we, Karthik? Um, <laughs> dear Lord. Morning, 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 morning. <laughs> we are going off the rails here, and I don't appreciate it. Um, but to your point, I, I I, think that's really important to point out, right? Is that the the team versions should be, like, if, if the real field is going to behave one way, and the team field should behave a different way. Like, at least this is a better way for it to... Uh, 
to be handled than the other way around. So um, the other uh, comment or question from chat is Mick last posting, my issue with people dismissing the tree bill of materials question is that it was a thing that someone else was asking about before the Q&A was posted. And he posted a link of a picture from Discord, I assume the FRC Discord, uh, where someone is basically saying, what if we go outside and get lumber from outside to make our bumpers? Um, <sighs> I mean, if someone I, genuinely is doing that, then they should have asked on the Q and A. Yeah. And because once they started talking about planting a seed or whatever, it seems so unrealistic. Because I, I'm not even getting to debate the realities of the situation, you know. But like phrasing the question this way, if we collect, or you can don't even have to apply it to lumbers. If we collect random parts, you know, like what's the value? And so that's a more legitimate yeah. question. And, and I know that you just roasted me for someone on my team saying that money was an easy resource to come by, but like, that's, it's not, if you're building, I'm assuming you're making bumpers, you might be making at least a field element to practice with or something like you can get bumper wood. You don't have to go outside and chop a tree down. Um, I don't think anyone's actually chopping a tree down, but like I was, I, I'm scared of this community lately. I'm terrified. <laughs> you never know. Uh, um, okay, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com/forward/slash/first updates now.